from the book of Deuteronomy, we heard, we hear the words of God to Moses, the prophet, especially on verse 15. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. Let's talk about the man that wrote these words. Moses has gone as far as he could go. He has faced God already for the things he did. He's not going to see the Holy Land. But his leadership brought the people of Israel very close to the land. He has served the people of Israel and he had brought them from slavery to wandering into the desert, into the promised land. And now they stand at the boundary line in between what has done and what is going to happen. They are on the borderline in between the past and into the future. They haven't yet crossed the river, yes, but they know it's there. It's waiting for them. The Holy Land, the Promised Land. The land that God himself promised to his people. Moses his speech or talk with the people, the family, the friends, and all of those who follow him until that point in life, then he does, and he talks about things that should be done, and should uh, be done before and after they come inside of the Holy Land. There he is, talking with his people. Maybe it's kind of a little too far from his sight, but I believe you can still see the green trees of the Holy Land, the Promised Land, and the other side of the Jordan River, the same river where Jesus is going to be baptized later on. Joshua is going to take the leadership now and take the Israel people across the river. They have been wandering in the desert for 40 years. Now, leadership has changed. But they're going to see the promised land. The land that God says flows where milk and honey flows. But, but, just like a father letting his son drive in his car for the first time, Moses has some words to the people. He has to tell them how they're going to behave once they got into that land that God promised and gave to them. Before you pass, says the Bible, I command you to love God, to walk in His ways, and to keep His commandments. Three powerful verbs that need to be taken care of, that need to be taken very seriously. To love God, to walk with God, and to keep the Word of God. The verse 15 starts, in verse 15 actually starts the message and the sermon that Moses is preaching to the people. See, I set before you today life and prosperity. Look, the green trees at the other side of the river. That's life, that's prosperity. You're not in the desert anymore, but you might be dead, it might be destruction. On verse 17, he continued to, to with the message, and he says, But if, you, if your heart turns away, and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, that will come to your house, and you'll be destroyed. It's a powerful, long message for the people. As they see the things that they fight for, they walk for in 40 years of their lives. The words of Moses to the people at Jordan's river is kind of similar to the words of Jesus when he preached the Sermon on the Mountain and continued to preach to the people on the chapter 5, 6, 7, and 8 of Matthew. Jesus started his message with, Blessed are the poor in the Spirit. And then in the next three chapters of the Bible, Jesus tells those who wants to follow him and those who wants to get into the Holy Land, the promised eternal land, 
There is many lessons to be learned, like forgiveness, like where you put your heart about judging others, about adultery, about prayer, about so many things. But the whole message starts with Jesus telling his people, be poor in the spirit. In other words, humble before God, humble your hearts before God. And the most important thing, the poor in the spirit means submit yourselves to God and to everything that comes from God because to Him belongs everything. That's the way Jesus sent people out. That's the way Jesus started and preached his first message. Now Moses, 700 years before, is preaching a message similar to that. You are about to receive a great blessing. Do not mess up, do not settle down and forget God. Do not let riches be in a way in between you and God. Do not take away from God. Do not bow down before other gods. Don't let the pleasures of the other land take you away from God. Moses reminds his people that they have to continue to love God, to walk in His ways, and to keep God's commandments, even when the riches of the land come closer, much closer. If they don't do that, they will spiritually die and they will not have the eternal promised land. And Moses was right to be so concerned and to preach that message. It didn't take too long for the people, for some of the people, to start to worship the gods of the Canaanites, Baal, and the other gods, and all other gods. But the message Moses preaches today, he preaches to us at this side of the river. The things that we do at this side of the river, it will have consequences to get at the other side of the river. It does concern you and me and the choices we make. And the choices we'll make at this side of the Jordan River will have consequences, of course. That's why in the reading today, there is a question that needs to be asked, what is our choice? What is your choice? In our life we make many. And some of them are good, some are not. But then sometimes you realize that some of the choices we make are not good, and some are very bad. And today as we listen to the words of the Old Testament, Moses gives his people a choice. A choice to choose good and live long and enjoy God's blessings and a choice to be disobedient and to suffer the results. It seems like we are talking about the fourth commandment. Do you know what um, is so different than the fourth commandment? As it has confirmation, most of you. The fourth commandment is the only commandment that brings a promise. That you obey, if you obey your parents, you live a long life on this earth. So Moses is kind of doing the same with the people. Look, if you obey God, if you do well, you live well, and you will not inherit just this eternal land, this land, this promised land, but also the eternal, the glorious land that God promised you. But first and foremost, before we do and we choose things, we need to know something. The same divine choice was also made for the children. That was made for the children of Israel. God has chosen the children of Israel to inherit the promised land, yes. They were known as His chosen people. Today, you and I also have been chosen to inherit the promised land that is yet to come. We have been chosen and called out of darkness that we might live in the light of knowledge of salvation. We have been called out of darkness to live with God in heaven, in heaven forever someday, so that the divine choice is already made. We have been called out of darkness to live with God because Jesus died on the cross for us and through the Holy Spirit. 
we are called to be obedient. But not just that. A sign of salvation, we receive the blessing of knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and all the things He does through humanity. And so now we are ambassadors of this of His will. If we can see, we can feel that we are the ones that inherit the promised land. We can also let people feel and have the same. We are ambassadors. We are the witnesses of God's will, not just for us, but for all of those who are lost in darkness. That's why we have church. That's why we are here. That's why we need to spread the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When God died and cross for us, He saved us. Now, as Christians, He asked us to love. He asked us to walk in His commandments in the Bible. And He asked us to give the word and spread the good news of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May God bless us for us so we can every day make the better choices in our lives and also spread the good news of the Lord and Savior Jesus so we can all see each other in eternal life and the promise eternal life. In Jesus' name, Amen.